Now that we have completed our main structure, it's time to move into the UVs and me explaining on how we're going to unwrap each of these meshes. The first thing I will do is explain what are UVs. And for this, I'm going into a file that I've created that will show you exactly what UVs are. Before we start, the first thing I want you to do is go into Windows, Settings and Preferences, Preferences. And we want to go down where it says Display. And we're going to go into Polygons. And the reason I want you to see these options is because by default, Maya sets the edges, the standard, and I want them to be soft and hard. Soft and hard edges is displayed in the model by dotted lines. So if you have a model that has soft edges, it's going to be represented in dotted lines. If the model has a hard edges, it's going to be a straight line. And this is important because it'll tell you which edges on your model will have a crease and which, which are going to be soft. And that's the first option that we want to turn on. The second option is crease edges. Crease edges will tell you exactly where you have your split on your UVs. And this will make more sense later on. And then you press save. Now I am going to explain how, what is an actual UV. A UV map is a flat representation of a surface of a 3D model used to easily unwrap textures. The process of creating a UV map is called UV unwrapping. The U and the V refer to the horizontal and vertical axes in the 2D space. You know that we have X, Y, and Z. These are used in the three in the three D space. But when you're referring into a two D plane, we refer it as U and V, which is X and Y. Once the polygonal mesh has been created, the next step is unwrapping it. And there's no such thing as a three D texture because in reality, it's a two D texture slapped on top of a three D model. This is where UV mapping comes in, as is the process of translating a 3D mesh into a 2D information so that the 2D texture can be unwrapped around it. It seems confusing at the beginning, but once you start practicing, you, it'll get easier. So let's open up the UV texture editor. And to open the UV texture editor, all you want to do is be in the modeling tab and then press UV, UV texture editor. And then when you click on the model, it will show you the UVs. Um, disregard this image because it's, you're not going to have that image. I just applied it so that I can demonstrate. Once you create any mesh, this is a cube. It'll come with it will come with basic UVs. And once you start distorting the mesh, this is, this is going to break. So you have to recreate it again. So every model that you create, even the sphere has a UV layout. Now, as I mentioned before, we have something called seams. Seams are the unfortunate and unavoidable side effect of planning the geometry. And this is because every single model is going to have a seam. And it's up to you to hide the scene. And there's a bunch of practices out there and tricks to hide your seams um, so that you don't see that cut in the model or in the texture. Bunch of models that I have done, you can see the seam, but the thing is I hide them very well so that when you look at them, they're not in view. And when you're developing for a game, you mostly put them, let's say this is a wall, you try to put, and this is going to be the front and the sides, you try to put your seams in the back so that people cannot see them if, if the wall is not um, a, three C, a 360 wall. But if it, if it is, then I'll hide the seam on one of the edges where two different textures meet so that 
it looks like it's part of the texture. That's how you hide most of the seams. Um, another thing that you have to take in consideration is something called distortion. Distortion in terms of a UV map is how much the shape and size of a pot of the polygons have had changes to accommodate for the flattening process. Too much distortion will affect the way details are displayed on the final model. Let's take, for example, these cubes. So these cubes are all unwrapped differently. And there's a way for you to tell if your model has been distorted or it has many seams. So if you come into the UV editor and you press this little checkerboard, is going to display a checkerboard on any model that you click. This is when you create a cube, this is the UV map that you create. And remember when I in the when I pressed before on window settings and I clicked on edges, see how I have green edges and white edges. The white edges indicate the cuts on my seams. So when I'm doing UVs, I like to see all my cuts so that I know exactly where the seams are. That way, when I place a texture, I know that I have to hide my seam and I know exactly where it is on the, te on the mesh itself. So clicking on this one, these are all cuts on the mesh. These, what I did was I separated every single shell of the mesh and they're divided by the hard edges. Then this one is another type of UV and you can see how stretched this one is. You can see all the distortion that it this created because this model does not look like these UVs or at least it doesn't have the same pixel space. Texel density is how detailed a surface looks. So let's say when you grab a model and you flatten the UVs, if you grab, let's say this face and you have the texel density of this model is even out, but you came to the UVs and you decrease the size on this face, the texel density on this area of the mesh is way less than all the rest. So that means that the detail placed on this face, you will have to make the detail bigger and larger for you to actually notice it because it has less texel, den uh, texel density, which means that your detail is going to come out very pixelated or blurry. So we want to have that in consideration when we do UVs. In this example, I just created this cube and it brought out this type of UVs. These are all consecutive UVs. So that means the flow of the texture is not going to have breaks in it. This one, on the other hand, you could see that we have breaks in between because none of the faces are um, merged. Any of the edges of the UVs have gaps in them. So if I move an edge like this one, you can see the texture moving all around. So if I want, if I want these two faces to have continuous texture, what I do is I just or merge them together or align them just like this. Most of the time, if you're going to be creating games, you're going to be doing UV overlap. Overlap is when you place two UVs on the same pixel space. This is very common when you do games so that you so that you can maximize your UV sheet. The UV sheet is basically from zero to one and is marked by numbers here. So the this area 
right here where all these UVs are is your main UV space. Everything else afterwards repeats. So whatever you have here is repeated here, 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 and to the infinity. The same thing goes to this area, the negative area axis as well. So when you have a, let's say a tileable, te a tileable texture, some techniques that you use for UVs is, let's say you have a model, um, since it, the texture is tileable, you know that it repeats perfectly along these edges. So what you do is, if you need more detail, what you do is you increase the size of the, of the UV map so that you can have more detail on it. But that's only when you have repeat tileable textures. If you have detail that you're going to bake on the texture is going to bake in this specific tile. So then anything after that is going just to repeat. So you won't be able to just increase the size because it's just going to look weird. It's going to have two repeats of the same detail that you just plotted here. And this one, you can see that it's all distorted because if we go into UV shell and you go into phase, you can see this, this phase is way smaller than these. But then at the same time, these are distorted because this is actually not the shape this face, this face is square. So it, in order for it to look correctly, it needs to be a square as well. So if I grab the vertices on this one and start scaling it up and then making it bigger, you could see how it's actually becoming a square so the texel density on this phase is actually fixed. And those are things that are important when you unwrap your models. Now I'm going to give you some examples of how I unwrap some of my models, some of the models that I have created and how I actually broke up the UVs. We're going to start with the statue temple. And as you can see, I added a lot of detail and then I broke, I broke the UV so that you can barely see the seams on my model. So let's go into Maya and see the model itself. So as you can see, you can barely see the seams on this model, but you know, but I place some of the seams right here because I know that the rock merges here, so it will be hard to actually see. Then the other scene that I created was down here because it's a statue and it's going to be on his feet. So you're, you're not, and there's going to be a rock underneath and you're not going to be able to see the seams. So the way I broke it down, if I click on the model, you're going to see how the UVs are laid out. And if I press here, I can see the texture on it. And this will gray out your texture so that you can actually see the UVs better. But in this case, look how I broke down my model. It looks like pieces all over the place, but you could see how I can select each part of the model. And that's, that's how you have to think about the model, breaking it down in little chunks so that you can create the UVs and they don't look distorted or stretched. So you see the wings and then you see this part up here. Same thing on the bottom, the legs as well. And over here. And then how I said before, 
look at my stretching. In some areas, I have a little bit of stretching, but there's sometimes that you cannot get around it. But when you see the model itself, it doesn't look stretched. So you play between the stretch and the squash and the squash, but you play also with your texture so that you can blend all those different things together so that your model doesn't look that bad. And if you see it in the texture, you're not going to see it. And this is a prop. So it's not a main focus. If, if it was something that I'm going to be like up close that I am going to be seeing the detail, then I would have put more effort on stretching it more so that I don't have none of these distortions, but this is a prop. So you got to think about what is my model main focus. If it's going to be a hero prop or is it just going to be a static mesh in the background? That's for this model. And the way I did it the same way, I just selected parts of the model, selected parts, and then I just Selected all these edges and used cut, move and sew, and then make made my shells to the best I could. And then after I got my shells, all I did was came to the unfold and unfolded them and got pretty good unfold on each piece. And that's how I obtained all my UV shells. And as you can see, I used the most space that I could with the amount of pieces trying to keep my texel density the same. This model, the texel density is mostly the same all around. You're not going to see a, a big stretching like the texture is going to look the same in each part of the model, even though they're different shells. Another one that I created and it was the candle. If I select the whole candle, this is the UVs on my candle. Now you you can see this is a this is basically a box, but I wanted all these edges to have a continuous a continuous edge because it was going to be wood. So if a grain, it's if I, if I was going to put a grain here, I wanted the grain to continue. So that's why I did my UVs this way for this box. And the same thing for the candle itself. And you can see I did all of these. I just clicked on an edge, cut it, and then used the straighten UVs for this. And I tried to keep it straight so that I can have a rope texture just like that so these are some of the things that i think before i start just cutting my mesh down before i start cutting it and where my seams are gonna be for this one the seams are i put them on the back because i don't want any seams in the front and then when i baked it i baked the model separately so that I can get all the detail as possible on my model. But on this class, since baking is a little bit advanced, we're not going to get into baking. Plus, we're not making a high poly mesh, the post. So this is another model that I created and the same techniques. Cutting. Cutting edges using planar mapping in some instances automatic mapping and then going in getting the texel space for one shell and then plotting it on the next and so on and so forth so that i could have everything correctly scaled and then i placed my texture that way my texture doesn't look like if it has the same texel density so then the details from here and from here and from here are going to look the same. It's not going to look like the detail from here is more detailed than the detail from this area because the texture density is the same. 
that's one thing you have to keep in mind. And then for us, since we're doing modular pieces, I have some modular pieces of, of my own over here. And on this one, you can see I stacked a lot of UVs because these are modular pieces. They're some some of them are different, but they're all but they all share the same UV space. So see how the UVs are jumping from one to the next, and these are different panels, but they all share the same UV space because these are modular pieces. These are pieces that um the how the lodge that we made, they're all different pieces, but they all will share one UV space. That way you can optimize all your UV spaces. But now you can see that if I grab this piece and I bring it closer to this one and I scale it on the negative, you can see that the texture blend with each other. And that's basically what you want pieces that you can put together, but you won't be able to see the seams. Now um, I'll show you because I modeled this and I haven't done UVs for it, but it's easier to create the UVs for it because it's the same process. I created this and this is how it looks. And I'm going to show you some techniques of how to create these looking cloth. And I did not model this by hand because it'll be really hard for you to pull this off unless you do it in ZBrush and then bring it into Maya. But moving all these vertices is going to be hard. But there's some techniques to get you to do some of these models um, using deformation. In the next video, we're going to start showing you guys how to start UVing our components. See you in the next video.